You know, I, me I remember the first time I went out, there, there was an outline that we were supposed to do, and basically it was you'd get to know people and you'd get to find out a little bit about their background. And then you ultimately came to a couple of questions that were very probing questions. One was, have you come to a point in your spiritual life where you're certain that if you were to die today, you'd go to heaven? And some people would say, I don't know. Some people would say yes. But the one that was really telling was the second one said, if you were to die your if you were to die today, if you were to find yourself standing before God, and he were to say to you, why should I let you into my heaven? What would you say? And that was real. It ultimately came back. I'm trusting in what I've done. I'm trusting in everything else. Or I'm trusting in the Lord Jesus. And But based on that, you went back and you went through uh, various things about uh, that the Lord gives us heaven as a free gift, about, uh, about that we're sinful people and don't deserve anything, about how Christ has done all these things for us and how we have this promise of eternal life with him. And, and, uh, and that was uh, the heart of things. You know, the story I was going to tell Mark when you asked was when I was in school, we, we had this uh, apartment and uh, it was actually the lower level of a split level house. The family lived up above and we had the bottom except for the laundry room and stuff they used. And we had a, a couch that was a sectional couch that sort of went around like this on the wall and then came around this way. And right above that was an I-beam that ran the length of the house. Now where I grew up it was wood, but in this case it was a steel I-beam. We used to have fun with that. We'd step back and we'd jump and we'd grab that I-beam and we'd see how far we could swing out and then we'd jump down. You know, we had a lot of fun with that I-beam. We were all sitting around there that night and Doug, one of my roommates, had jumped up on this, had held on to it, and had sort of, you know, I couldn't have done it, <laughs> but he swung upside down and had his feet up on the beam, was sitting his feet up on the beam and his, his hands up there holding on, and I'm sitting right on the end here, and I hear I'm slipping. And, and before, I, just as fast as I could, I got my arm out there, he came down, hit my arm, and instead of coming straight down, head, head forced onto the concrete, which probably would have been his last move, uh, I was able to tip him enough to where he landed on his, his side, and he, and he wasn't hurt. But I, I put that together with the, this option of being able to witness to somebody. Because it's, it's, it's frightening to be able to, you know, at the first times to say, do I dare say anything? And it shouldn't be, because the Lord's the one that's going to do the work. But, but the fact is, Doug was, uh, was destined for eternity there, and may or may not have known the Lord. But, uh, but it, it, so this wasn't a witnessing thing, but I put it like that. You have an opportunity to talk to somebody and that person may well not know the Lord. You don't know what's going to happen in their life, but you have a chance to touch them in a way that can turn things around. And so, I mean, what, what I did there, it was, it was reaction. It had nothing to do with me thinking about it or planning what I was going to do. I just did it. And I got a pretty good yank in my arm when he came down. But, uh, but, the, but the Lord had a plan. He protected him. But in the same way, the Lord gives us opportunities. Maybe with somebody in our family, maybe with a friend, maybe somebody we don't know, or we see somebody that's hurting, and we get a chance to talk to them somewhat first and then and share sometimes just a few things. I like to give away a set of brochures that have uh, tell the story of how to become a believer and tell us a little bit of the a walk through the New Testament, uh, along with some good Bible verses. And so, you know, you always you never know what's going to happen with those. But somebody could be on this, this edge of something happening in their life. And, and you are the person stand, the Lord has put there to share with them. And so it's, uh, and again, after you do it a few times, you're, you're not, not afraid at all. But it's, uh, but I, so I encourage anybody that would, would listen to what we're talking about here to, to, to look for opportunities there and get some tools to be able to just share the gospel. And what's the gospel? The sim one of the simplest one is what? John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believed in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Uh, and so that really says that uh, God did it. You, you believe and you have eternal, eternal life. It's interesting that that verse goes on. Probably the best known verse in the Bible or one of them. Uh, but John 3.17 says, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world be sa would be saved through him. And then it goes on to say, whoever believes in him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe is condemned already because they have not believed in God's one and only son. You know, so you realize that there's two camps there. That it's a promise. It's easy. God's done it all for us. Just wants us to believe. 
And if you're a believer, you are not condemned. You have eternal life. And for those that have not heard, have not uh, believed, they're in a whole different, uh, whole different camp. And that's our charge is to try to reach those people and, you know, and, and share the truth with them. But this John 3, 16 is so simple. I mean, everybody probably knows that verse. And uh, there's others, uh, John 6, 47, that says, I tell you the truth, the one who believes has everlasting life. You know, there's an interesting little tidbit with that, if I can. Mark. Go ahead. Our, 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 um, the way our alarm clock is set at home, it comes up with, uh, at least the one that I wake up on, comes up with 6.47 in the morning. And every time I see that, yeah, John 6.47, I tell you the truth, the one who believes has eternal life. <laughs> you know, so I wake up to that first thing in the morning. 